Good morning, everyone. It's gonna be a good day today. Thursday, when I'm filming this. I found an article on uh, cdllife.com this morning while I was having my coffee reading the today's news. Apparently, I'm gonna have to bring up the article once we get to the truck, but apparently there is a company in the US that has purchased a remote truck. And what I believe they mean by that is it's remote controlled from a remote location, not inside the truck. They're in some building somewhere in some city controlling this truck like a video game. I'm gonna get more into the article once we get to the truck and once the sun decides to join us for today, but I thought that was very interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about that. They showed the setup with, of what they call the driver's pod. It's like three monitors, sort of like a gamer's console, the gamer screen. And on the screen are cameras from on the truck. And this person's driving it with joysticks as if they were playing a video game. And these are gonna be on the highways with us? I've gotta look more into this because that just doesn't seem safe to me at all. Why, if you're gonna hire a driver to sit in a building somewhere in a cubicle controlling these trucks, why not just hire the driver to sit in the truck? It'd be so hard to be able to get a feel for what the conditions are from an office somewhere miles away. Like what if it's icy? What if it's slippery? What if the cameras get covered in snow and ice, right? We'll talk more about this in a bit. So do you guys remember our issue from yesterday? Lots well, of issue, you ask me. Our alternator went, right? Or at least we thought it was the alternator. I was doubtful whether or not they'd be able to get it fixed last night because the shop is very busy and I didn't know if they had the specific alternator part ready to go. I thought they might have to order it today and at the earliest it would be here like midday and they would uh, replace it tonight on the evening shift. Well, I just came here to check things out and check this out. Brand new alternator. I know it's dark, you can't really see what's going on here, but the shop pulled through for me and got the truck fixed and ready to go for this morning. So I wanna give a big shout out to them over in, over in our shop over there. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys jumped on this very quick. You got it done fast. I brought it to them yesterday afternoon around two o'clock and I'm here today in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. And it's already sitting here waiting for me. They had it plugged in so the block heater was heating the engine. It's getting a little cool outside and everything's all good to go for me. Didn't even have to skip a beat or switch trucks or anything. So that's awesome. I already tested it out. It's working well. I'll show you in a minute when we get in there. Just let me do my, the rest of my pre-trip here. Let me get all my stuff in the truck. Let me get everything ready to go. And uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit. It's, uh, the sun still isn't up. It's sleeping in more and more every day. So it's that time of year again. But yeah, this is really good news. Good news. Step roll tight is what we need to take with us today. Just gonna pull up here and make sure that it's empty. Yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Look at that, the sun's finally waking up over there. It's about time. Probably be another hour before it finally shows its face. Slacker. Oh, you guys can't see in there, right? Eh? Empty.
I'm here, I've got the trailer opened up. They've started loading me, but there was a problem with one of the pieces they were gonna put on my trailer. So they're figuring that out inside right now. And I figured we could talk about uh, what I was saying earlier this morning, that remote truck. Let's see if I have that article still pulled up here. I was kind of cringing at the thought of it. It was on CDL Life. I'll probably have to pull it up again here. Uh, CDL Life, I just type in CDL Life into Google, then go to their trucking news tab. And scroll down just a little bit, and it's right here. Tech company hires world's first remote truck driver amid U.S. operations launch. What they mean by that, it's like it's a remote control delivery truck. They're sitting in an office or a cubicle somewhere in what looks like a video game setup, but it's real life. My eyes kind of bulge out of my head this morning while I was reading this over my breakfast. And uh, it's a Swedish tech company called Einride, E-I-N-R-I-D-E. -E. They've announced that they've created a new type of truck driver job as they begin operations within the United States. In a major announcement on Wednesday, November 3rd, Einride said that they'd created a new type of job within the freight industry and hired the world's first remote trucker. Einride says that the remote truck driver's job will entail the control of multiple pods in real time from a central location. Now they're saying here, in contrast to conventional trucking, remote operation will be safer, involve more regular hours, and provide a more hospitable work environment. Einride said. So you don't actually have to get in your truck and go with your truck to go pick up your freight and deliver it. You can just go to your, I don't know, your basement and turn on your game console and go pick up the freight as if you're playing a video game like American Truck Simulator. The company said that the identity of the remote trucker or Einrod pod operator, you're not a remote trucker, their official title is, I'm a pod operator. And they have a little video here. Uh, I'm not going to play the video here for copyright reasons, but I'll show you a little screenshot of the setup that they got here. It blows my mind. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, but that's just my opinion, okay? Maybe I need to learn more about this. Let's see if I can get a good uh, good shot here. That would be your workplace. Check this out. You sit down and you control the truck from here. Try to get my reflection out of there for you. It's a remote control truck. It's like you're at a gaming console. Really? What could possibly go wrong? Right? I don't just want to grab the whole video and show it to you here because I don't own the video. I just wanted to show you a little snapshot of it there and uh, encourage you to go over to cdllife.com and find the article there as well about this remote truck driving pod operator job. Can you imagine? At a party or something. Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a truck driver. What do you do? Oh, the same thing, except I'm a pod operator. You're a what? This is taking video gaming to a dangerous level, in my opinion. Einride also unveiled new models of their driverless vehicles, including a U.S.-specific version of the Einride pod and a new flatbed pod. Who's going to tie the load down? I must be missing something here. The flatbed pod was built to transport shipping containers to make the transition between sea and road freight seamless. This is what the truck looks like here. What in tarnation? Really? So I'm very confused. I'm hoping that I'm missing something here and that I'm misunderstanding this. Because what would you do if there's a problem? So the, the, the trailer or this flatbed gets loaded with a container. What if the latches don't latch? What do you got to like leave your pod station downtown, get in your vehicle, drive all the way over to where your remote control truck is, fix it, drive all the way back to your gaming station and then continue driving it? Wouldn't it be just a little easier? I don't know. Just to have a driver in the truck and then if something goes wrong, he can just get out of the truck, walk to the trailer, fix it and walk back to the truck and continue. Maybe I'm old school. I don't know. This, this seems, I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical. And they say that they want to add 2,000 new jobs. 2,000 new pod operators <laughs> in the US. Uh, 
you guys go ahead. I'm Canadian, if you didn't know that. So you guys go ahead and test test them out down there on your roads. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> how would you cross the border with those things? You show up to the border, the customs officer's looking around. Where's the dude? What are you gonna like send over a digital passport through the internet and, and like talk to him through a speaker? Say, hey, I'm actually here in New York. We're trying to cross into Manitoba on our remote truck. I'm probably missing something here. Th this <laughs> Einride has plans to set up headquarters in New York with regional offices in Austin, Texas, San Francisco, California, and somewhere in the Southeast. That's all they say. I, I don't know how I feel about this. I know that we need innovation in the trucking industry. I know that we need to move forward because as much as we hate to think about it, diesel fuel will be gone one day. We will have used it all. We need to have an alternative fuel source or an alternative way of transporting our goods and services to avoid a war. You know what's going to happen when we realize as a global community, all of the countries around the world, when we realize that, oh no, there's no more diesel fuel. What we have in storage is that's it. Anybody with the means to is going to be fighting over that last little bit if we don't have anything else to fall back on. It will be catastrophic. Death, destruction. You know how humans are. You know how you know how it gets. When we run low on resources and we get backed into a corner, things get really bad and really dark really fast. We need to diversify the trucking industry. Absolutely. We need we need to tr try out these electric trucks. We need to have pioneers out there trying these technologies out, seeing if they can make it work. We have to have an open mind and give it a chance. We don't have to give up diesel trucks right now, thank goodness, because there's still plenty to go around. But we have to remember, one day there won't be. And we can't just be like, well, that won't be in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't care. Well, what if it's in our kids' lifetime? Our great-grandkids' lifetime? We have to think of the future for them. What kind of world are they going to face? Because somewhere down the line, whether it be our great-grandkids or their grandkids, someone is going to have to live in a world where we run out of this finite resource that we're using for fuel right now. If we don't give them something to fall back on, if we don't start working on it now, we're going to have huge problems. So we have to have an open mind. I know people laugh it off. They laugh at electric trucks. They think it's ridiculous. They think it's dumb. It's not. We're thinking ahead for the future. We're not there yet. We can't use electric trucks for what we do now. We're not there. But we have to start working towards it. And we need to encourage these people who are working towards new technologies. This remote truck driving thing, I'm very skeptical on. Okay, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how that's going to work, but let them give it a shot. See what happens, right? You know, whether it be hydrogen trucks, electric trucks, the world is going to be very, very different for our descendants. And very often in today's world, it's a very me, me, me focused society, very me, me, me focused economy and lifestyle. We forget to think of the future. We have what we have today at least in our part of the world, because of what our forefathers before us did for us. I like to uh, repeat what Tim says uh, on Timcast. He says, we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. Every time we cross over a bridge, there used to be a time when that bridge wasn't there and people had to take a boat across or go way around or just forget crossing altogether. We now have bridges, we have infrastructure, we got these trucks to transport our goods around, we got planes in the sky. Everything that we're living in and everything that we use every day is something that someone else did in the past to make our lives better. Look at this. I have more computing power in this phone than the spaceship that went to the moon. I can take pictures with this thing, I can watch videos with this thing. I can post videos to you right now all over the world. You're all watching this all at the same time, probably. All over in Australia, in Europe, India, maybe even in China if you have a secret VPN. Shh, I won't tell. South America. And we have this global community that's all coming together now because of what people before us have done. So we have to remember that for our grandkids and great-grandkids in the future, we are those people. We are the people and we are the shoulders that they're going to be standing on. Are we building a solid foundation for them? Or is everything going to come crumbling down because we didn't do our part to secure this big structure that and society and civilization that we've been building for 
thousands of years. I'm getting deep now. I'm going to stop. But uh, <laughs> remote trucks. I'm open. I have an open mind. Let's see what happens. I'm skeptical. I think it's kind of funny. What do you think? I'm always open to learn in the in the comments section. That's why I ask for your opinions. I may have a little ID badge here that says professional driver. Don't let that fool you. I don't know everything. I'm still learning every day. And uh, we're all learning together. And we can never allow ourselves to think or feel like we have it all set. We know it all. I don't. This world is crazy right now. I can't explain it. I'm just going to try to do the best I can every day. And every day I'm going to try to do better. And always keep an open mind to learn. So on another note, remember I was showing you the battery gauge yesterday, right? That's what it's supposed to look like. Up there at 14. That means it's charging. That's where it's supposed to be. And that reminds me. Always keep your dash dusted. Always keep your dusted dash. One of those. You pick. Nice. My garbage can is full here. Thanks. Almost out of bull stock visible. Gonna have to get another can in the truck here tomorrow. Or wait a second. Ha ha ha! I'm more prepared than I thought. Always have bolts not ready. Hey, they're launching in Canada in two months now, eh? January 2022. I haven't heard anything that that's being changed. It's going to be launched in January. Make sure you uh, keep your eyes open on the shelves. I'll let you know where it's all available and where you can find it. And then we'll go buy some together. I'll show you. I don't have to show you how to buy things, but I can show you where to get it. I was going to tell you, I'll show you how to buy it. As if you don't know how to use money that you earned. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I'm talking in circles here. Lights on for safety. Wait one second. Wait one second. I don't like the way this is over here. This truck has wiring for the CB, but I don't have a CB radio in here because uh, it wouldn't be useful to me at all up around where i'm from and in canada people don't really use cb radios that's you know like i've been saying that we've been moving forward and not, like, cb radios is from the 1960s 70s uh, we use like uh radios like vhf radios and stuff if we need to contact with one another some people have cb radios in their truck still uh for when they're running convoy with a friend or something just to talk back and forth on a separate channel but for the most part, it's uh, CB radios seem to be more popular still in the U.S. Uh, that part of uh, trucking and that technology has sort of stayed with everyone through the years. Good for them. I don't run with one, but I have all the wiring for it in here because there used to be one in here. And uh, every once in a while, it likes to come out of where I've hid it away. All right. Off we go. What's the time now? Should get back mid-afternoon. What in tarnation? Are they moving another house? trailer and now I'm hooking up to the next step deck that I'm going to be taking to Arburg tomorrow. Right back there again. I've actually got two pickups tomorrow. I got one in Arburg and then I've got one in Toulon and then I gotta drop the one from Toulon in Winnipeg and then bring the one from Arburg back here. That's the plan. We've got to get a pretty early start so I'm hooking up to the trailer I need for tomorrow today getting it all ready to go so that in the morning I can just double check to make sure everything's good to go and hit the road. They want me up in Arburg at 8 30. It's a two-hour drive from here, which means I gotta leave here at 6:30. 
going to be taking trailer 413 DT. It has a lift axle on it, so I don't know why it's not 413 DTL. But uh, 413, it's a drop deck, it's a tri-axle. It also has a lift axle, so there should be an L on there. I'm just gonna check to make sure it's empty. Let's see if I can get this thing out of here. There we go. My left hand is good for absolutely nothing. Oh, and there's a big mess in here, okay. Okay, we got a riser right here. We got two risers, good. Uh, the strap is just there for whatever reason. I'll have to clean that up. All right, okay, this is the trailer we're taking tomorrow. I'm gonna get it all ready to go. And we're gonna start by cleaning up this mess. And this should not be here. All these pails and all this. I cleaned this up. I remember I had 413 a couple of weeks ago and I cleaned this all up nicely and I, at least the straps are rolled up, but man. Man. Release the hounds! Why'd you bring that outside? Come here. Come here, show me what you what'd you bring out here. Chevy, let him come here. Diesel, come here. What do you got there? It's my puppy. Why'd you bring him outside? He's gonna get all dirty, man. Huh? Here, give him to me. Give him to me. You better not give him to Chevy. Diesel. I'll take good care of him, okay? Go do your business. Go. No. Really, guys? Chevy, no. <gasps> this is, uh, this is Diesel's puppy. Diesel takes really good care of him. He doesn't let Chevy or anyone else touch him. Because Chevy... What would you do, Chevy? I want to find out what's inside. What do you think's inside? It could be anything. 